Hello, welcome back to Galata Studios. Nice to see everyone again. I am here, I'm David Galata of Galata Studios. And today I'm going to be working further on my Mammoth Cave series. This time I am working in Unreal Colors. And this is a very vibrant piece, very bright. And I had to unify the light as well as the reds here. And now I gotta bring my details back in. So today, on my palette, I've got all my colors that I need. I have a Indian yellow and nickel titanium yellow, which is kind of like a very pale eggy yellow. It's got a touch of green in it, and that's what I'm using for my, my color of my light. I've got cadmium red light and alizarin crimson. And what I've done is I've made a slight glaze of that, and it's still wet. Hands clean, just see, just a little bit wet, which is perfect because now when I put in the new colors, they'll blend in very nicely and they'll help bring out some of these details. So let's get started, shall we? I'm going to use a small filbert brush. Uh, this is a Zero Isabi Isocryl, and again, this type of brush is often uh, recommended to be used with acrylics. It was designed for acrylics, but it stands up to the turpentine well and makes a nice stiff brush for me to use. So that's always a good thing. So I'm going to start right up in here. And what I want to do is I want to take first a, a quick look at how the cadmium red responds. Oh, that, that's nice. All right, good. So I'll be able to use a bit of that with some of the other colors here. There we go. Now what I want is I don't want a pure Indian yellow. I want to take some of my red, mix that in here on the palette using my trusty palette knife. Always good to have your palette knife ready because you never know when you're going to need a little spot of color or you want to mix a couple of things. And sometimes things don't get along too well, so you gotta, you gotta check it out. You gotta see. You gotta take a good look and go, hmm, you know, is that color working out with this one, or is it just making a mess? And sometimes that's all it does, is it makes a mess. All right, here we go. I've got a slightly brighter color. I think I want it a little brighter, actually. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. It's very exciting. I'm gonna use a little bit of cadmium yellow. Now, these are old Holland paints. For those of you who've been following the other videos on, on our YouTube page here at Colada Studios, you'll know that Old Holland is my favorite brand of pre-made paint. I do know how to make my own paint, and I like making my own paint, and when I do, I use Old Holland's uh, pigments. I find their pigments to be an outstanding quality, and they work really well with my glass muller. There we go, I got a little bit of an orangey color here, which is what I want. I didn't want it too brightly yellowed, but I also didn't want it too deeply red. So it's a nice medium orange. There we go. I'm gonna bring that in. And I'm gonna start right here. And just start bringing in, reestablishing some of these shapes that might have gone a little overwhelmed by the glaze. And I don't think you can see it real well yet, but this does make for a very smooth transition of colors when you're painting on top of an already wet glaze. It's a real joy to work with. I really enjoy it. The medium that I use for the glaze is my usual medium, which is soft glow, and that's a medium of my own invention. I had worked on this piece a bit as part of my live feed, which is on uh, Facebook, and that can be found Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. I like getting going first thing in the morning, painting. It's always a good idea. So Wednesdays at 10 a.m. at Facebook slash David Galata, and you will find me there Wednesday mornings doing paintings. Never can tell what I'm going to start painting first, so I don't make any plans like that. All depends on where I'm at and what needs to be done. Because some of these pieces need a lot of work, and others are 
faster. So if I can finish one on my own, I will. But in the meantime, I like to work on these here so you can see what's going on. I like to share my experiences painting. and I like to share what I know in terms of techniques. And here again, I'm using my finger. And that reminds me of what I was saying before during my live feed is that fingernails can be utilized as kind of a a mall stick but only if they're long enough and sometimes you'll see some painters will have a long fingernail it's not an affectation you know they're not making a statement or saying oh look how lovely my nails are they're, what they're doing is is that they're using their fingernail as a painting tool. They're mimicking the effect of having a mall stick. A mall stick is a long stick. And if you see like self-portraits of like Rembrandt and everything, Rembrandt especially always has his mall stick. Uh, Norman Rockwell also always had a, a mall stick in hand. And they're a long dowel and at the end is a leather or chamois wrapped piece of cork or rubber these days. A lot of them are rubber. You can still get some of the uh, the older types. Oh, looks like I'm missing some some red here. So I'm gonna put that in. Just to go. Oh, that's very exciting. We'll see if we'll keep that. We might keep that. I like that. So it's probably very likely it'll be kept. There we go. It goes right into the paint, right into the glaze. And that's what we want. We want it right into the glaze. I'm gonna wipe off my brush and my rag here. Always have a painting rag on hand. Always make sure your hands are clean. These are the safety rules of a studio. Safe for the painting, and then safe for you too. You count. You should keep yourself safe when you're doing paintings. I also try to keep our animals. I have a couple of cats and we have a rabbit here named uh, Mr. Bilbo and he nibbles on everything so we, we keep him out of the studio for his own safety. I, I don't even want to think about what any of these pigments would do to a rabbit. I just, the very idea since ooh, shivers down my spine. This stuff is even even the non-toxic stuff is not not safe. You shouldn't be eating that. I, I don't know why people are not safer about their paints, but you know, sometimes people get caught up in the moment, and not really thinking safety. They're they're so happy doing. But even though you're happy doing, do it safely. You'll be happier in the long run. You'll have more time to be happy. That's for certain. You start messing around and putting your, your fingers near your mouth and things like that. And uh, next thing you know, you've got nerve damage. You know, I had heard um, one theory that was one of the, I don't know, who knows, who knows if it's actually true. Lots of theories abound that, uh, that was one of the problems that Renoir had later in life when he was wheelchair bound because his, his nervous system had been damaged because he had a habit of lipping his brushes and putting his brushes near his mouth. It's not a good habit to get into. And I understand I love Renoir very much, love his work. But if you're here in front of him, I'd say, I'd tell him, don't do that. Stop, stop doing that. You know, know it helps you think. Know it helps you keep the brush nice and sharp. But you really don't need that. Better off to buy a new brush. Much better off that way. I do all these folds. And it almost looked as if parts of the column had fallen. And then they, they all folded on each other. It was very interesting. Very, very interesting. Now, I've done a lot of speaking about Mammoth Cave since I started filming this process. 
And to me, that's a really good thing because I, I want people aware of the caves. I want people to know about them and understand there is a whole world beneath our feet. We don't know anything about it. Barely. And we really haven't scratched the surface of this world. We think we have. But that's hubris. There's a lot we don't know. There's still learning stuff. I was reading an article not too long ago about the, the inner core of our planet and how it's a little different than the theories had been. So there's a thing, folks. Always be careful about theories. Theories are not facts. They're not facts. And sometimes we make real errors because we want to believe the theory is the way it is because of what we want to believe. That's not what nature is doing. Nature is doing its own thing. We learn from nature, not the other way around. So it's good to keep that in mind. Don't fall in love with theories. Fall in love with facts. When you have a fact, and there are very few of those, very few of those in the world, there are very few facts, then fall in love all you want. Because it's a fact. I hear there's a lot of confusion over what a fact is as opposed to an opinion or a theory or a hypothesis. And all I got to say, folks, is look the words up. It's right there. It's right there. You know. It's kind of like if you jump off a cliff, guess what? You're going to fall. Gravity's a fact. You know, the effects of gravity is a fact. So that, that's something that, that, that we, we know of. We're not sure what, what it is. But we do know it's a fact. And knowing it's a fact does not mean you know what it is or why it's there or why it behaves the way it does. Again, lots of people make so many assumptions about things. And then they fall in love with their assumptions. You know, I can kind of understand that. The problem is, is that at some point that, that lover of an assumption is going to let you down. Gonna let you down. This is beginning to look a lot more like this side, so I'm very happy with that. I'm just gonna clean this up just a little bit. Could really use just a little, little clean up here. There were these deep crevices in the rock. This is fascinating. The way, the way the rock, all these minerals left behind by tiny trickles of water. And then you have scalloped uh, edges to the walls because the water was moving fast at one time, so it was kicking up stones and rocks and things and hitting the walls, breaking off pieces. Starts making a pattern in the walls. A really fascinating process. Amazing world we live in. Absolutely amazing. And we're all here together. We should treat each other that way. Like we're all here together. We're not here separately. We don't have separate accounts. Yeah. We are denizens of this world. There we go. Oh, I like that. To me, that really brings everything together a little bit more. And that, that's what I wanted. That's what I needed for this today. Is bring some of these things in just a little bit more. All right, good, 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 good. Now, I'm not going to work over here too much. I am going to work over here. So I'm going to scooch over just a little bit and start getting this in. And this area was dark to begin with. And so when I put the glaze in, it darkened it out. But what it did do is even up the colors, which was really necessary. The colors were a little jangled on this side and didn't match as well with the rest of the piece so the glaze helped to bring everything together and now i just got to bring out the details that were there before good thing is i got now detailed notes instead of footnotes so i'm just bringing in these mid-ground oranges in here 
just to bring it in and show me where things were. There we go. Bring all this stuff in here. There we go. That's good. That's good. I like the way that looks. The little shelves of stone. They're amazing the shapes that the stone brings in. Always amazing. You get to see so much when you really take your time in a cave. You know, I, I know sometimes the tours, like, went to a lorry cave recently in Virginia, and, you know, they, they really rush you through the, the whole thing. They're trying to get the next group through and all of that. And I don't know, when you take your time in a cave, you see so much more. So even if they're moving fast, do yourself a favor, go twice. I know, that could be more expensive. But it's worth it. It's worth it. If you want to see that cave, you know, because your first time through, you know, a lot of people taking pictures and everything. And so they're going to see those things later at home. It's not the same thing as seeing them with your eyes. So you can go the first time, take all your photos, go a second time. Now that you know what's there, you can really look. And yes, you're going to hear the same stories and whatnot, but yeah, never mind the stories. Never mind the stories. You got that the first time around. The second time around, you really look. You look at all the formations. You look at what's really in there. That changes things. It changes things quite radically. I gotta wipe off my brush real quick. There's a little too much color there. There we go. And this formation had more of a pebbly surface. It wasn't long streaks and strokes. It was more bumps and dots. But then you've got it in your memory as well as on a picture. Now why is that important? Well, I'll tell you. The reason is, is that when you look at a photograph, you're looking at a flattened image. It is the image of a three-dimensional object that's just been mushed into place just like that and so that's why you look heavier in a photograph or on video you gain 20 pounds or 10 pounds or whatever it is because now you're not seeing with two eyes and seeing the three dimensions you're seeing everything flattened out so people don't look the way they really do in a photograph. And the same is true of cave formations, probably even more especially. We're not used to looking at them, not anymore anyway. So if you want to really understand the shapes of a cave, you've got to use your eyeballs. You can't just rely on photos. When I did the paintings for this, I wanted to use my eyes. This is where painting is still superior to photography in some ways. It relies on the skill of the artist, true, as opposed to the precision of the machine. However, that machine is not actually representing things correctly. It's flattening every image so that they become less three-dimensional. And so you lose a lot of details. You lose parts that your eye saw, but what your camera distorts, and that distortion can be a big factor in a painting. So if you want to really know what something looks like, use all the tools available, not just one. All right, this now looks more like part of the formation, which is what I wanted. Now I'm going to work on this area, so what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring the camera over so you can see what I'm working on. There you go. I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure everybody knows. All right. Now I'm going to come in here and get some of these little, little bits back into place. Just like that. Now what I want to do is I want to do my final highlights for this area a little later once the paint is dry because I want the light to rest on the stone and not sink into the stone. But these mid colors, they can. They can sink into the stone all they want. I have no problems with that. And then I can place my highlights 
that are actually there right on top of all that. And I'm just bringing out these shelves that maybe show up just a little bit more from some reflected light back here. And the closer they are to the floor, the more of that reflected light they're going to have. As the light bounces off the floor here and hits all this little shelf rock here. And I've got some bits and pieces. It's like almost like a, it looked like a wall. It was very interesting. A natural formation, natural wall, just built up from collapsed stone and limestone dripping on everything. There we go. And now we're going to get these, these shelves up too. And I'm not using a lot of paint. I don't want to use a lot of paint here. It's not good for the glaze. And I want to make sure that this painting is not going to suffer. And there I am finger painting again. Yeah. I don't want these paintings to suffer from technical difficulties. And every painting does eventually. Every painting has that, that issue where as they get older, you know, things crack, things fade a little bit if you don't have permanent, and even permanent pigments. I mean, let's face it, some paintings are hundreds of years old. Yeah, you're gonna have a little degradation of the paint. That's what happens when things get older. Trust me, I've learned about that. <laughs> I used to have a full head of hair. Yeah, now my body just doesn't want to make that stuff anymore. So, I'm like a broken painting. Oh, there we go. I kind of like that idea. Just need a little restoration, I'll be just fine. If only it were that simple, eh? <laughs> so, here we go. Yeah, if I find I like doing the live feeds, I'm going to start doing live feeds for YouTube. I haven't decided when. If anyone has any suggestions for me who's watching, please, by all means, let me know. I would love to have your opinion. I'm making this for everyone. So if I get some requests as to what would be a good day and time to do a live feed for YouTube, oh, I would love to hear that. I would love to hear that. In the meantime, I am going to continue working with Facebook. All right, I've got my oranges reestablished here. So, we're in luck. Ah, there I am again. Now I'm going to work over in here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mix some cadmium red, not too much, and a little bit of the alizarin crimson. I want to darken it down just a little bit. Now, alizarin crimson is very subtle when it's mixed with other colors, but it does change the tone of a color. There we go just a bit. I don't want to use too much of this. Otherwise, what I could do is I could just use, say, a cadmium red dark, but these two are safe to mix together. And I can just bring that in just a little bit and then go finger painting again. I don't have a lot of details back in here. There we go. I'm going to bring these out just a bit, just so people notice that they're there. Oh yeah, some rocks back here too. There were rocks everywhere. It's a cave. But yeah, yeah, there were rocks here too. Just tumbled along. Some of them showed up better than others. But that area was deep in shadow. So now we've got some shadowy rocks reestablished in there. And that's good. That's what we needed. All right, so. Now we come in to our yellows. And this yellow is a mixture of that cadmium yellow and a little bit of the nickel titanium yellow. And we're just gonna, there we go, just pop in some lighter color. But I don't want to do too much. I want this to dry between this layer and the next one. I just want to point out for myself for the next time I'm here. Hi, this is what you want to do, Dave. Oh, thank you, Dave, very much. I appreciate that. There we go. All right, let's get in with some alizarin crimson. Bring in 
and some deeper colors in here mixed with a little bit of the, the reds so I can get some of these broken up pieces of stone in there get them nicely in there we go that's much better yeah I like that all right now I'm just gonna move some in here so I have these little bits of stone there now these stones are resting on each other instead of being separated and now they're they're together as they were it was like this big plug of stone it was fascinating interesting to paint yeah, these paintings are a real challenge and this looked like a strip of cave bacon yeah that's a real thing so i'm going to make sure i've got the wavy lines of cave bacon coming in there there now that looks a lot more sensible look at that see just a little bit of paint you can change a whole area there we go good right in and reconnect with the rest of the rock right in there good I like that and here too we had a little bit of that in here these are very subtle color changes very subtle color changes they're going to inform the eye as to what's happening here. Why does it look this way? What's going on with this formation? There we go. Good. And we're gonna bring in some of those colors up in here into these dark areas. Because they were deep, they were thick. They were not quite this deep and thick, but I needed to have that darkness in there. Without that darkness, you're not gonna see any light. All things are needed in this world. I'll bring that out a little bit, just a little bit more. I like that. I see a little spot here that could use a little work here. Let's bring in this color with a little more of the alizarin crimson. Just bring that down right into there. And you have to be very careful with this. It's very easy to go too far. Very, very easy. Easiest thing in the world to go too far with these things. There. It was a very unusual formation. I'll bring that down from up here. And now that's been reestablished. All right. Now, like I said, I don't want to do too much right now because at this point, I want this to dry before I work on the next phase of this. I'm just putting in some little bits here and there. And take a quick look. Now often I will step back and take a look and see how it looks from like 20 feet away and you know make some decisions about what I need to do next. I do that once the filming is done. And I make some notes to myself so that I know what to do next time around. So next time around I'm putting in the highlight colors for all this stone and then that section of the painting is done which is very very exciting for me i got a little bit no that's gonna require a brush it's gonna require some clean yellow there we go one of the beauties of oils fixing it up is a breeze it really is it does not take rocket science to do that Get that scumbled in a little more. That's what this is scumbling. It's a dry brush technique. I love it. I use it for a lot of other paintings. There. But it's also useful for this sort of thing where you're, you're trying to even some things out, bring in some details, leave some alone, get rid of some. You can do anything. Anything. You know, often. Uh, Bob Ross would say, this is your world painted your way. He's, he's right. He's right. This is your world, and you can. You can paint it any way you want. So, this is what I've done for today. 
for this painting and at this point it has to rest so it'll dry so next week I'll be finishing up all the highlights on the red stone and then I can start the top and the bottom and once that's finished the painting will be done that's gorgeous so I'm very happy with the progress today I hope you have enjoyed watching me and seeing this painting slowly come to life so next week I'll see you here on YouTube and I'll also be on live feed on Facebook. So take care from Galata Studios and myself and have a wonderful day painting.